What's up, guys? My Brown here for the lines.com, playpicks.com. Going to talk to you a little bit about Sunday night football, 49ers and the Packers. Before we get going here, I actually have a play on this game, a couple of different plays, actually, and a couple of different props. But while we get going here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and then let us know in the comment section how you're going to play this game as we head into Sunday night football. This is not right. This is actually at the 49ers here. Um, we have the Packers as three-point underdogs, three-point favorites are the 49ers. You can see the money line here, plus 145. On the Packers, one, minus 161 on the 49ers. And then this total is set. You can find a 50. You can find a 50 and a half out there as well. So from an injury standpoint in this game, Packers, listen, this is a pretty big deal. I know it's a pretty fairly clean injury report for them, but Eldon Jenkins is going to be out. I mean, he's listed as doubtful, which doubtful's out. And so what it, what it is here is he was filling in for Bakhtiari, who is the left tackle for the Packers. Well, Bakhtiari is on IR, so they had to move Jenkins over from left guard to left tackle. Well, now he's going to be out. So now you have your starting left tackle that's out. You have the fill-in left tackle that's out, and they're going to be going with the third option there at left tackle on the 49er side of things you know about all the guys that are already on IR for them all the stuff's been going on with those guys and outside of that we do have a few of the big names uh, Eric Armstead Javon Kinlaw Emmanuel Mosley those are all starters defensive end defensive tackle cornerback they are all questionable as we head into this game Elijah Mitchell backup running well Running back up, running back, turn starting running back. Now, you know, whatever. There's what, seven different rotations going on there with the 49ers. But Elijah Mitchell is doubtful. That said, Trey Sermon did clear concussion protocol. So he should be able to go for the 49ers. So Sermon in the doghouse in week one to getting into the game in week two to getting the starting gig here in week three due to all the injuries that are going on with the Packers. So, I mean, with the uh, 49ers. Roll down a little bit here so that you can take a look at this uh, at this matchup if you want to read along. So, Packers, the big story here is this defense versus 49ers offense. And it's not that this 49ers offense has actually been lighting things up or anything like that. But this Packers defense has actually been just really, really bad to start the season so far. So, they are last in the NFL in sack percentage. They've only, sat, they've only got one sack on the whole team. Also tied for last in quarterback pressures. They're 21st in pass rush win rate. And they are dead last in EPA per play allowed. They are 26th in pass defense according to DVOA. They're 25th in run defense according to DVOA. And they're also allowing the third worst opponent success rate as well. Third worst, third best, however you want to look at it. Good for them, bad for, bad for the Packers um, when it comes to success rate. So, I mean, it, it's been horrible. And then if you look at the pressure rate that we're talking about, how they only have one sack on the year, last in the league in pressures, well, one of the things that the 49ers do actually well is Garoppolo's only been hit or sacked on 3.3% of his dropbacks so far in the short you know, two-game season that we've got so far. That's actually the lowest rate in the league. So one of the things that's been going on here, one, he's been either getting the ball out really quickly and not taking those hits or sacks, Offensive line has been keeping him fairly clean as well. So it's a big mismatch there between what we've got going. Because Zedaria Smith for the Packers got moved to IR. So their best pass rusher is not on the team right now. So we have got to figure out, does that change over the course of one week? Because we hadn't seen it in the first two weeks for the Packers. Or is it going to be more of the same? All that said, this Packers offense did rebound last week after the horrible, horrible game against the Saints. They actually, through two weeks, are 13th in the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus, overall offense. So, you know, look, this is an offense that you expect to be kind of top eight, top five, because it's Aaron Rodgers, and, but it's it's that's not the case. But it's top 13, it's upper half. So, you know, after the rebound, not all that horrible. Um, one of the things about the 49ers offense, outside of Garoppolo just having a ton of time and him being able to do – uh, avoid getting hit, avoid getting sacked and all that, is if you kind of dig deep and you look at, man, the success here, they have 64% of their receiving yards have come after the catch, which is just insanity. But then you look a little bit further into the, in, in, into the you know stats there, and Garoppolo is 
28th in the league in average depth of target. So despite the fact that they've moved the ball through the air a ton, 64%. So two over two-thirds of the yard, two, right at two-thirds of the yards, have come after the catch. So like he's throwing the ball a few yards down the field. Again, 28th in the league in average depth of target. And then everything's getting done after the catch. Debo Samuel, Kittle, like everything's getting done after the catch. That's not sustainable, obviously. You can't have 64% of your yards come after. The, that's just not how this works in this league. So something's going to have to give. I mean, Garoppolo's only been graded the 22nd best quarterback so far by Pro Football Focus through the first couple of weeks. So it's not like he's been lighting the world on fire despite the fact that this offense has actually had some success. So some, something to kind of – so again, something's got to give, right? Like something, something's got to give here in this game. I'll tell you right now. So there is, there was a four available, and you can kind of take a look here. We can shop odds as well um, over here on the odds page. Just click odds at the top of uh, the lines over here. So you can see it's three across the board as we sit right now. It was four earlier in the week. I don't know why this thing moved a whole point. Uh, maybe because of that injury report that I was talking about, though. Listen. Armstead and Kinlaw have been listed as questionable last couple of weeks they played. Uh, so, you know, again, how this is all going to work out, I don't really know, but I mean, you may, maybe people are reacting off that injury report. Because, I mean, look, Armstead, Kinlaw, Mosley, all three starters, all three listed as questionable. So maybe that's why this thing came off the four to the three. But I took the Packers at plus four. Um, and I don't know if this thing gets back to three and a half because it moved. It didn't move straight from four to three. You know, I mean, it, it stayed on three and a half for a while. You could have gotten Packers at three and a half for a, a pretty good amount of time. And only here recently did it move to three. And so for me, I have these two teams power rated as pretty much a coin flip. So I'm getting, I was getting more than a field goal with the team that I have power rated the exact same as the other team. And so if that's the case, then my numbers strictly alone tell me that I have to play the Packers in a situation like that. Further, I did like what I saw in last week in the second half of that game. It looked like Aaron Rodgers. Listen, that first week against the Saints, like, yeah, the Saints blowing them out was at least shocking, but not the Saints winning. That wasn't shocking. The This is a guy who didn't practice all offseason. He didn't work with his team all offseason. It was going to take Aaron Rodgers a little bit, even if he is the reigning MVP, even if he is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. You can't just – get in you can't just get on a football field with other elite athletes and just it just clicks and it just happens no matter what like you these are th you got to train for this stuff you got to practice for this stuff he wasn't doing that all offseason I honestly think he didn't know whether he was going to play again or not and so it took him a little while to get ready but that that's to get uh, ready for the season but listen the second half of that game last week he looked a lot more like Aaron Rodgers and like looked a lot more like in this an, an extra week added on here so give me the power rated team that I have even with the other one and it with, at more than a field goal. And so here, even sitting at three, I would at least, I would at least consider it at three. I think this thing might end up taking back up to three and a half. So I don't think it's going to get worse than three. You're certainly going to be able to find a three whenever you look at all the different books as they sit right now. So you're certainly going to be able to find a three. So for me, uh, if I'm going to play the Packers, I'm looking to wait on that hook to show back up so that you can get a little bit better than a field goal. And I think it will spot, I think it will come back up at some spot before the game, but just be sure and be paying attention for that. Uh, on the player prop side of thing, and of course, we talk about this. We have this awesome prop finder here whenever you go and you go to a game preview. I have a couple that I'm going to play this week. Look, I'm riding A.J. Dillon again this week. So they actually used him decently last week, but look, it, it went way down his rushing prop. And so now sitting at 18 and a half yards over here at FanDuel, I, I have the over on the 18 and a half yards. Listen, when Jamal Williams was on this team, they used him and gave him a handful of carries every single game. They invested a second round pick in AJ Dillon. Like he, they have real draft capital invested in this guy. And he is going to have to take a little bit of that workload off of Aaron Jones. And I think last week you started to see that a little bit more confidence in him getting a little bit more work. And again, 19 yards is not very much. And I don't think there's any, ch I don't really think this game gets out of hand at all. I think that this is, you know, a pretty hard fought game, but if it happens to get out of hand in favor of the Packers, then 
for sure he goes over this number because he's going to get all the garbage time carries. So uh, my projection, a lot of other projection systems I had, so mine came in at 24 and a half, so a nice little six-yard advantage there. A couple of other projection systems I saw, one had 25, one had 27, so everyone's kind of in that low to mid-20s. So every everyone at least favors the over here on the rushing yards as well. And then I even took a little flyer, much a little smaller play on the over on receiving yards as well. Because you really can kind of get there on one catch and definitely can get there on two catches. And if you saw, he was involved at least a little bit while he was on the field in the passing game as well in the game last week. So um, I took a little bit of the over on the five and a half receiving yards as well. The other prop that I'm playing, and this one is more of how I think that this game is going to go because my projections were sitting here, uh, receptions for, oh, this thing is bumped up to eight and a half. So I played over seven and a half. My projection had it right at, like it was a little bit over seven and a half, like 7.8. So at eight and a half, I actually think there's a slight bit of advantage to the under now on this. Uh but that said, maybe not anything that we're looking to play. Didn't know that this thing had already ticked up uh, to the eight and a half. And then finally, the other play that I have is I'm just going to take what I've seen the last two weeks and I'm going to find the biggest number, which is 34 and a half right here. And I'm going to play the under on Brandon Ayuk on receiving yards because Brandon Ayuk has not been a part of this offense at all. First week, we got that he wasn't one of the best receivers out there. Then they then Shanahan walked it back and said he's still dealing with a hamstring injury. And so what is it? Do not is he in the doghouse? Is he not in the doghouse? Does he have a hamstring injury? Whatever it is. Regardless, he's not been a part of this offense so far. So until they actually start to work him in and have him actually be a real part of this offense, then I'm going to go ahead and play the under on this. I mean, listen, he's definitely third in the pecking order, regardless, right? Even if he is, even if he is out of the doghouse. I mean, he's behind Debo Samuel. He's behind George Kittle for sure. So I mean he's third in the pecking order as it is anyway. They have other receivers. They throw the backs, different things like that. So I'll take the under 34 here. Actually have him projected closer to mid-20s. I might be a little bit more bearish than some people are out there on Ayuk with the, with my projections or something like that. But again, I have more in the mid-20s. So uh, I'm playing the under on Ayuk receiving yards as well. So anyhow, um, this is going to be a very interesting game. One, I think that we will find out a lot about both of these teams here. Certainly pay attention to that injury report as well, uh, for especially for uh, 49ers, as it comes out 90 minutes before kickoff, because those are three different starters for that team that are questionable. And so, you know, if any of them aren't able to go, pretty big downgrade there. For a 49ers team, it's already pretty beat up and pretty nicked up over the course of the season so far. So, guys, as always, again, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in that comment section you're going to play the game. Also, subscribe. Actually, if you are a subscriber, let's go ahead and play a game for this thing. Uh, go ahead and put in the comment section what you think the exact score of the game is going to be. Now, you not just, any, not just two numbers. You have to put the team and the number, the team and the number. You have to put 49ers, 58, Packers, 57. If you get it exactly right, we'll send you an Amazon gift card, and we want to thank you for being a subscriber to the channel. But again, you do have to be a subscriber to the channel. You got to go over, find us on Twitter as well, and subscribe there. Guys, good luck on all your bets here on Sunday Night Football.